Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, tutorial number 20 dedicated to the software RQDA. So today we will talk about a very uh, advanced uh, section which is related to RQDA and SQLite. So what I mean by that, actually as you know, uh, every time uh, when you open your RQDA software here, you have to open a new uh, file. And this is a file which ends by .rqda. And actually, everything is in this file. I mean that all the files are inside this .rqda, all the codes, all the categories, everything. So you've got everything in one single amazing rqda file. But now the question is, how is it actually working? And actually, what you have to understand is that actually a .rqda inside it's like a database so a database and to be more specific a sqlite database basically if you just change the .rqda with .ask you uh, sqlite or even a db or something else it will still work and you would be able to read it in a database Actually, maybe you already worked uh, with uh, basic, uh, I would say more traditional SQL uh, files. I'm thinking about MySQL or Postgres SQL and so on. So if you, if, if, you, if you worked on that file, but never on SQLite file, maybe the first thing you, you've tried is just to open a RQDA file, not with the RQDA software but with a text editor. And if you try, you will see a lot of accents and you will see that you cannot read it. So how can we read a file uh, to understand how uh, the, the RQDA uh, database file is working? So to do it, we need to install a software. And there is a lot and a lot and a lot of software on the market. There is free software, non-free, some working on Windows, other only on Linux and so on and so on. For this video, I've decided to install a software uh, which is called SQLite Manager, uh, which is actually a Firefox plugin. I decided to do like this because I guess that almost uh, everyone has got a Firefox on its computer. If not, just download Firefox or maybe if you don't want, just download another software. Just go on Google and, and find another software that is similar. and. First at all, we'll see how to install this software. And after we'll see uh, how to, to understand the database. And why are we doing all this stuff? This will be very, very nice for you to perform uh, very, very specific queries. So on this video, I will just introduce you very basic queries. And I guess on the next video, I will introduce specific queries, especially related to attributes or to very other kind of specific queries. But just the first step now, I will just go on Google. Okay, so now I'm on Google. And I just write SQLite Manager Firefox. Okay, and the first website should be that one. And then you just said add the SQLite Manager to Firefox. Uh, okay, I'm agree. So you will just need to wait a couple of seconds. And again, you have to install it like this. And then... I guess I have to restart Firefox. Mm, he doesn't ask me to restart the Firefox, but I guess I will just try to restart Firefox. Okay, so I don't know what happened on my case. Usually it's working fine. Maybe it's just because I installed it before. Oh, I will activate it. So I'm just going to the Firefox and to the to the add-on menu here. You can see this small logo like a puzzle. And then I will just activate it. 
and then I need to restart it. Usually it's activating alone and asking you to restart, but I guess it's because I've just installed it a couple of seconds before to do this video and uninstall it, so that's why. But on your, on your side, it should work on, on the first glance. So uh, I just wait until the Firefox restarts and this is done here. And now you see that you've got a uh, logo, which is the SQL Manager plugin. If not, maybe you can just press on Alt and F and just go to Tools and then press on here. Or just press on here if you've got the logo. Or you can even add it if you don't have it with right click and personalize and then you will add this blue logo here by dragging and dropping. Anyway, just let's open the SQL Lite Manager plugin for Firefox. And by the way, I will just go to copy um, the path. Okay, so he is asking you, uh, because before I already opened another database, so he's asking me if I want to open it again, but actually uh, on your site, if you install it for the first time, nothing will happen. So just this window will show. And actually it's like a Firefox plugin, but it has got its own window, so it's very nice. And now what we will do is to import the database. So just go uh, here on this logo, and then the windows open, and I will just enter the path in which my RQDA file is located. And I will just write open like this. And now you see on the left that there is like two, two parts on this window, the left side and the right side. And as you can see, the left side is related to the table. So it's quite difficult to do this video because actually uh, some of you may already have worked a lot with databases and some of you may discover it, but I will just try to explain you step by step, uh, slowly to explain you how it's working. Because actually, if you are, for instance, we will begin with the first one, annotation, which is here. So I click on annotation. Even if I click two times, I see that this is the table annotation and this table has got many rows. So it has got the FID, which means files ID, position, annotation, owner, date, date M means date modification, if you modificate again uh, something you, you did, and status. So let's see here, if you, if you are on a structure here, you just see uh, the SQL query that was used to create this table, but basically you don't really need it. And after you see the on the column idea, you, you, you just see the same stuff da, than here. So basically it's quite the same stuff. And after you can just go on the second tab. And here it's very interesting because I see all annotation I've done. Uh, basically, if you want to know what is annotation, I just invite you to to follow the other videos. Um, but basically on this file, as you can see, I've just made one annotation, which is here. So if I point my mouse here, I can see all the comment I did. And this is very nice because with SQLite Manager plugin for Firefox, you can see all annotation you did, all codings in, uh, in one... Uh, at once, you don't need to, to go to each folder and click every time again. Here you've got a global view. So that's very nice to, to use this plugin. And here you can see that each, actually there is only one line, but each line will got its own uh, row ID. And this means that it's the FID 13. So this means that I make the annotation on the file number 13. If I'm going to RQDA, I will just go to the file number 13 and then I will just open it here and somewhere here I've done the annotation. Uh, I just need to check it where. Uh, is it really the 13? Yes, it's the 13. Uh, there is a annotation. Oh yeah, here. So you can see here, if I click here, I've got the annotation. So elle accumule, nanana, nanana. And so here, it's the same annotation as you can see. 
And if you add some more annotation, for sure you will have more annotation. What is very nice, you can see the owner. So for instance, if you work with many people, like you begin to work and then you send a file to someone and someone modifies something, you will at each line see who is the owner. So in my case, it's not really useful because I'm alone, but if you are working with many people, it may be useful because each one may have, uh, you will see the owner, uh, I mean, who made every modification. And actually, uh, just to change the owner, you can go to the settings menu and here change the owner or even watch the videos dedicated to the settings. After, we'll see the next table. As you can see, there is 18 table. So the next table is called attributes. So here, you can see the structure, or even doing like this. So you see all the rows of this table attributes. And then here, it's quite interesting because you see uh, the attributes I've done. So actually, uh, in order to understand what is the attributes, you may check the video dedicated to attributes. But just here, I want to tell you something, is that each attribute has got a, a number. So each has got a number, but on the status, sometimes there is zero and sometimes there is one. So let me just see it. If I open this one, you see that I've just got two attributes and the two attributes are age and uh, the gender, so sex and age in French. And these attributes are actually on number one. So basically it means that the other attributes were done before, but after I deleted it, but it, do it didn't delete really, really for real on the database. It just put the statue number zero. So I can't see it on RQDA. So that's very nice because uh, if I want to restore, I can like click two times on it and maybe change to to ch changing the numbers, and, and then I can I, I can restore the attributes that I deleted before. So this may be very uh, nice uh, to to see the the status, but just take care when it's status zero, it means that it's like you've deleted it on RQDA. So you will see only the number one, and this is exactly what happened here. And you can see that here I've done a memo. And this is very nice because instead of clicking like this, like this on this, you've just got the memo to read and you can just point like this and you see the memo that you've done. So I said that and this attribute called age, I've done a, a kind of memo and one means junior, two middle and three senior. And for the gender, one means men and two means women. So that's the, the way I did it. And uh, after you see the date, so it's very, very nice because you see uh, the day, the, the hours, the, even the second at which you've created this. So as you can see, I was working quite late on that stuff, uh, whatever. And if you do any modification on the same stuff you are doing, then it will write the last modification date on this one. So I've done only one time the stuff and I didn't modificate anything as you can see here. Uh, and after you've got the class, so actually, if you do attributes, you can do either characters or numeric. So this is a numeric style and this is a character style. So to understand that, I just invite you to follow the, the video dedicated to the attributes uh, on RQDA. After, we've got the case attribute table. And there is actually nothing on that because uh, I have some uh, attributes but actually, I just have some attributes dedicated to the files and not to the case. Uh, actually, you can attribute the attributes on the on cases or on files. And I just use the files. And I think I will don't cover the, the case because uh, I mean to attribute to attribute attribute on case because this is quite a special way. I'm, I'm not working on that way. But if you go to the official documentation of RQDA, you can read some nice notes about it. So I just invite you to check it. After you've got the case link page, uh, linkage. And actually, uh, I really wonder what this table is. I never used it, but actually, uh, I don't really know. So if someone knows, so just drop a line under. It may be nice to, to know uh, what is the usage of this one uh, for. Uh, anyway, now let's go to cases. <coughs> so
sorry, and to the cases, actually, if I'm going here, I can see that I've got those cases, three cases, and you can see that all my cases are here, so all of them have got an idea, and once again, if, if you are with the mouse, you can just point on here to see everything that is written, or even just uh, making uh, making it a little bit bigger, it's also working like this, or just click two times on it, and then you see everything on that way, so this is just another way of watching the stuff. And here you've got the name of the case, the memo, the owner, the date, the modification date, and the idea. So usually it's the same, the idea is the same here. After you've got the code categories. So basically code categories, as it says, it's all the categories I've done. And if I'm going here, uh, basically it's that one here, this menu. So you see everything here. And actually you can just make some modification. You can put it by order. So first letter to last letter and so on. And you can do the same here. So from the first idea or from the last to the first one. And the owner will make nothing because there is only one owner in that case. And here you can also see it by date. So it's up to you. You can make a lot of, uh, you can order it the way you like it. So by memo, this will order it by everything who doesn't have a memo or who have a memo. And this is once again very important because the statue number one is everything that I can see here. And the statue number zero, it's categories code that I created before, but that I deleted on RQDA, but actually they are not really, really deleted for real on the, on the database. And this is very nice because if I need it again, I just change the value from zero to one in order to get it again on the software. So if you try it, uh, just make some backup before, uh, before to change any number. And I invite you to, to make a backup before uh, to save uh, one file and save place before to do anything with SQL Lite Manager in order to be sure that you dis destroy nothing. After you've got the codings, and this is the most important part, and basically the codings are all the underlining I've done. And just be very careful because if you go here, you see that you've got many tables here. So you can see if I'm going on cases, I've got just one table. But if I go to codings, I've got many tables because I cannot really show everything on the same line because it will be far too big. As you can see, I've, do I've done a 1,311 uh, underlining, so I've got all my underlining in here. Uh, the difference with the underlining is that you've got um, actually a C idea and a F idea. So basically, this means that here I've uh, this is related. The, so the first the raw idea number one is related to the file idea number one. So basically, the file idea number one is related to the free codes table. So you can see you can make link with uh, with databases and this is just uh, how databases are, are working. So this is related to the, to, the, uh, to, to the file number one, so to the interview number one. And if I'm going back to coding, so this is file ID is related to interview number one. And if I go the opposite, you can see that the last one is file ID number 18 because I've just got 18 interviews in my case. So this is file ID number one, and this is related to the code ID number 30. So to see uh, what does it mean, you just need to go to the free source here, a uh, free code, sorry, so this one, and you've check, you have to check the number 30. So this is related to the horlogerie. So this is a code called horlogerie, uh, which is basically the watching manufacturer in French language. So I've made a relation uh, between, I've, do, I've underlined this text which is talking about my 
uh, um, interview about a guy who was working in the watching manufacturer industry and uh, this guy was the first interview so that's why the file idea is number one and the code idea is uh, of manufacturing industry is number 30 because we've just seen it before so this is like th th this is like the, the 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 way it's working and after you've got the text you underline here you've got memos so here i've got no memos you've got the date the owner and the status the same way like before one or zero and here you've got the cell first and the cell end so basically this means that in the text related to the to the interview number one the text I've underlined begins at character number 61 and ends at character 290. And you can go so on and so on. And once again, you can click two times on it to open it like this. And so on and so on. So you may do some changes, but actually uh, I wouldn't really do some, some changes uh, on, on this SQLite uh, manager. I would just use it to, to visualize the stuff and to export later, we'll see that on the next video, and do other stuff, but basically to underline, I wouldn't do it on that way. This would be ridiculous to to, to calculate wh where is the first one and where is the last one. You, 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 just, you just underline with the GUI application. So this is really much more nicer. So I really do not recommend you to, to to make something uh, a new line and 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 do and, and checking the first and the last character, just use the GUI application like we saw on the other video. So this is working nice like this. And after you've got the coding table number two, so you just need to go to the settings video to see what is the meaning of coding table number two. And I told you that I'm never using it, so actually there is nothing on it. So this is totally normal. Next table is the files attribute. So as it says, the files attributes is uh, related to the attributes I gave to the files. So if I'm going here on the files, and then I'm doing right click and I'm going to uh, 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 something like view attributes, and then I've got this table which is here. So basically what I've done for all my 18 interviews, I said, that uh, the gender is either one if it's a man or two if it's a woman and the age is one if it's a junior two if it's a middle age uh, i mean a middle age sorry i mean someone who is uh, aged uh, between junior and senior and three if it's a senior person so this is the way i've managed it and if you go to the table you really see how it's working for instance uh, here you, you've got the same stuff, so the, the creation date, I didn't do any modification, so I don't have anything in modification date. Uh, and this is the owner, and this is the status, so everything is on one, I've deleted nothing. And here it's how it's working, for instance. Um, the first one is related to the gender, and this is the file number one. So the file number one has got the value number one. So what does it mean? It means that this is a man. And if I'm going to the file number four, for instance, this one is a girl. So it's exactly the same stuff like you see before on the table I've showed you on RQDA. And for the age is the same. So for instance, um, this is the, the, the interview number 11 because it's the file number 11 and the value is number two. So it means that this person is not a junior and not a senior in between. And this one, number 14, is a senior. So it's working like this. And after you go to the files categories and the files categories, how is that working? So basically, it's, uh, the, um, it's just the files categories, basically. I just have uh, nothing else to say about it. Maybe if I'm going to here, it's just that that stuff here. So I've created categories file. If you want to know for what do you have to use that one, just go to the related uh, video dedicated to, to the files categories. And here you can see the memos I've done. And here you see actually that the status in which I've deleted everything, uh, I've deleted those files categories. So I don't have memo on this and on all the available categories, I've did a memo. And once again, to see uh, it good, just point the mouse here and you can see everything on the good way uh, like this. 
after that, uh, what else can I say? So here, I've just got, uh, for the category, it's very simple. I've just got a name, the owner, the date. As you can see, I didn't do any modification. And here you see the the idea. So for instance, the, the let's say the Swiss Switzerland uh, files category has got the idea number 11 and the France has got one, the idea number 12. By the way, the idea is, is a automatic attribution. So you never have to, to attribute any idea. When you create something, uh, it's automatic. It will it will give you a automatic attribution. So if you do for the first time the first uh, files category you made, uh, RQDA will give you the idea number one, and then number two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc. So it's working in a kind of rational and logical way. After, let's see the free code. So basically, this is all the code I've created. If I'm going here. I'm going to code. So this is all the codes I've created. And once again, it's working uh, on the same way like before. So you've just got an idea, and there is, is the same idea here than here. So for instance, uh, Monster is like a famous French uh, website to find uh, some jobs. And this has got the idea number five. And I've created this folder. And this is the date I've created it. So I've created it, uh, you can see, uh, at which time, uh, which uh, hour, minutes, and even second. And this is very nice because you've got uh, a nice uh, structured uh, information. And this is the status. So once again, uh, all those code I've deleted. So for instance, I've created a LVMH code and HEM code, which is actually a shop for the, for the cloth. But actually, after that, I was thinking that I don't need this one. It's not relevant anymore. So I've just deleted it. So actually, if I'm going here, I cannot see any HEM again, but it still remains on my database in case I want to restore it. So it's very, very nice organized. And you can see that this is a, a good database or architecture. After you have got some two cases called image and image coding. So you have to know that you cannot use it uh, right now on RQDA, but I guess that later the the, the guy who created uh, RQDA would like to add some image on RQDA and on the image you can write some codings like on the other software. But for the moment you cannot use it. So I guess the, the creator just uh, include it in the in the in the database for later to to be ready to use it, but uh, didn't uh, implement uh, de developed the the stuff on on the GUI application of RQDA. So maybe later in the future version we'll be able to use uh, images uh, inside uh, RQDA. Here is the journal. So as you can see here, I've made uh, the journal. And this is very nice to, to see it with uh, SQLite uh, Manager Firefox plugin, because like this, every time I have to go here and click two times on it to see what's written here, click two times on it to see what's written here like this. But here, just in one side, I can see everything that uh, all the journal I've written. So journal is very simple. There is just like uh, the name of the journal, which is actually the name is uh, is actually just in relation with the with the date, but if you want, you can even rename it and just add some more information after the text if you feel more comfortable with it, or just cancel everything and just create the date about it. And actually, um, here is the the real date in which you've created it. So basically, uh, it's the same every time. But this is the the, 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 the date uh, working like the, the other date in here. So what I would just want to say, uh, uh, if you if you if you modificate some date here, if you modify the time or the date, uh, we still can see the real date in which you've created the, the folder. So this is just small information. So so just be aware of this. And after here, you've got uh, again the status, so one or zero. So I deleted nothing. So I'm just getting on one, but you can try on your own. If you delete some journals, uh, you may see it on zero or after, but you you need to import again uh, the folder on, on this uh, 
Firefox module. So whatever, let's go on this one. So this is just related to the to the to the project memo. So if I'm going here, I see all the information I've written here. So it's quite a big memo. If I'm going here with my mouse, I see the same stuff. And here, this about section is just written that this the database was created by the RQDA software. It gives you even the address of the website. So this is just automatic, let it like this. And then you've got uh, image directories. So I don't know what is that one. I guess it's related to the image calls, but for the moment, just don't care about it. And again, I didn't do any modification. I've created this uh, memo uh, on this date. So you know that I've created my project uh, the Sunday, February 26th at 22 hour 47 and 1 second 2012. And here you've got the database of version, which it's actually related to the version of RQDA. So this means that you use the version 0 0.2 uh, slash 2, uh, underline 2, sorry. After you've got the sources, and the sources are basically uh, the files. So you can see I've got 18 interviews, and here I've got the same interviews. Each interview has got a number. And as I was created it by order, it's logical that my first interview has got the raw ID number one and the second and number two because I've imported it in a logical way. Uh, but maybe if you, if you, for instance, here, if you begin with the first one and then you import the number three before the number two, and even if you write number two here, uh, number three here, the, the code, the raw ID will be number two because as I told you, the automatic attribution is going in a logical way. So that's to say one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc. And here you can see that I've done some modification. So this is nice because I see that uh, I've created this interview number 12 at this date. But after I've got another modification at another time. And the state you, you see that I've deleted nothing. So I've got everything like this. Uh, after. Oh yeah, on here, if I'm pointing here, you see the whole text of uh, the interview. So basically, if I'm going here, I'm seeing all the text, but if I'm pointing the same one here, I just see the text uh, without coding. So this is just the text of the interview. And after that, you've got very important uh, two last uh, stuff to understand, uh, the tree code and the tree file. So actually, this, the first one, the tree code, is related to basically which code links to which code categories. So remember when I showed you the, um, the plot on the other video dedicated to the plot on RQDA, I showed you that one code can go to many code categories. And basically how you have to understand all the stuff well, it's working like this. So first of all, this is everything that I've deleted. So don't care about it. I just want, I just will take this one. So this means the following one. I've attributed the code idea number one to the category code number one. So what is the code idea number one? Uh, to know it, I just have to go to the three codes here. And this is the code dedicated to negative opinion. And after I'm going back to the here, and what is the category idea number one? In order to know it, I have to go to the table called code categories, which is here. And the number one is dedicated to our feelings. So basically negative opinion codes is ready is is uh, is linked to the code categories called uh, feelings. And actually, if I'm going here, maybe if I'm going, uh, how can I do it? Yeah, just like this. So now you see that uh, here, the code idea number one has just got one uh, code idea, a category code idea. But for instance, number four has got three relations. 
So let's see to understand how it's working. The code idea number four, what's the meaning of the code idea number four? As I told you before, to know it, you have to go to the free code. If you go to the free code, this is the code called JobUp. So JobUp is a famous website in Switzerland to find some jobs. Uh, if you are into unemployment, for instance, you go to JobUp and you find some jobs. So this is this code and this code is uh, linked to the, sorry, I just have to go again here, is linked to the category idea number four, 23 and 28. Uh, and uh, no, actually it's not linked to the four anymore because as you can see, I've deleted this relation. So the code number four is is linked to the number 23 and 28. So what is uh, the code number four is job up and now we need to know what is 23 and 28. To know it, as I told you, you go to code categories and you can see that 23 is related to the code called platform. So this is basically uh, all the website and the code uh, number, uh, oh, I forget, sorry. Uh, I have quite a short term memory, as you can see. Um, the code idea number 28, yeah. So now I have to go to 28 to check it. So category idea 28. Uh, to go to code category as I told you and 28 so job up is also related to Switzerland so I've just made and if I go to the memo here I've just written that I've, I've made a, a memo dedicated to all the Swiss website the website used in Switzerland and this is logical that job up belongs to that cause so basically this is how the the, the table is working the, the database is working and I just want to tell you that if you have some difficulties to understand it at the first time, it's quite uh, normal. And even if you don't understand it and just want to make simple stuff on RQDA, you don't really need to understand it. But I just de de decided to do this video because I guess that some users would like to know and are interested to know how it's working. And now the three files, which is the last uh, code, uh, the last table, sorry, is dedicated to which files belongs to which files categories. So basically, uh, I've made some files categories uh, here. And this is the files categories here. And you know that each files categories has got uh, many files. So let's just take again one example. Uh, okay, so let's take uh, I don't know, anyway, let's take this one, number 10, the, so the file idea number 10. So file idea number 10 means the interview number 10. So the interview number 10 is, and, and once again, this column is actually just linked to its parent, and its parent, it's like this one here, this idea. So you, if, you, if you are familiar with database, you already know that you can uh, link uh, everything on a database. So this is the case. So uh, this, this is actually linked. And uh, so we saw that the, the interview number 10 has got uh, the category number three. So what is the category number three? To know it, you just go to files categories and then on number three, you see that uh, this is uh, the, the category called men. So if I'm going to the men here, you can see that here there is the interview number 10, which is actually a man. And if you do like this, for instance, if you, even here, you see, you can see the file idea. So this is really the file idea number 10, which is related to the files categories. Hmm, it's quite a shame that we don't see the ID of the files categories here. So maybe later on the next version, we'll see it. But anyway, whatever, it's already okay like this. And actually, uh, you can see that there is a lot of other stuff here. So if I'm going here again and just sort it by uh, categories idea, 
I will have to see. You can, you can see here. So for instance, uh, let's say that the code idea, the category idea number 12 has got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, has got five uh, categories. So what is the file idea number 12? Once, uh, what is the category idea number 12? So once again, to know it, you just go to category idea. Which is actually uh, Uh, no, you go to not not to category idea to files category. Sorry, yeah, sometimes I'm confused myself. So to files categories, and then you see that number twelve is France. So if you go to France here, you really see that uh, one, two, three, four, five. It has got all this this number. So it's actually working, but for sure, uh, you 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 will not do, you will use um, how to say. Sometimes it's easier to use uh, the application. So in that case, I just tell you how the, 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 the database is working. So for sure, you will not just every time go on what is the meaning of this file idea and what is the meaning of this category idea. You we will just do it the stuff like this. But sometimes, as I told you, for instance, the journal is a nice example uh, because it's very annoying to click every time two times. So you just go here and you check the journal. So this is. A, a nice way so personally speaking uh, I use if it's easier to do something on the GUI application of RQDA I'm going straight on it and if it's easier such as the journal to, to, to check the journal I'm just going to the journal and to visualize it with this uh, Firefox plugin and now I just want to introduce you a very uh, basic introduction about queries so basically you've got your database and you can make some queries. So to make some queries, actually, you need to know the, the language of the SQL language. So if you already worked with SQLite or SQL, um, MySQL, Postgres or something else, you already know how to use the, the language. But even if you don't know how to use the language and would like to learn more, I really suggest you to go to, 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 to YouTube and check uh, some other videos done by other people or even on Google uh, to check some website who explains you how to use the queries. And you have to know that actually uh, it's not very uh, difficult uh, language. Uh, we are not talking about C++, Java or PHP, something like that. Uh, actually, it's a very natural language. As you can see, this means you will select uh, from a table name. So let's just try something. We'll just write select from any table name. So let's write, hmm, let's just write coding. And just execute the command. And here you see that actually you've got the coding table. If you ask select from, let's take another one. Let's take the free code. Uh, and here you've got the free code as you can see so basically what I've done is exactly if I'm clicking here and I'm going here so I've done that kind of query so maybe it's not the best one but let's just try something else on free code let's say we want just the, the first 10 results so to do that you use the famous limit uh, command and then you say from 0 to 10 and then you do you, you 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 execute your SQL query and here you see that it's working and if I'm doing like that it's working as well and let's just go to the let's just see this example on the on the free code so if I check everything you can see that here I've got all the results because before if I was going on free codes and like this I had to go like this but if I don't put any limit here, I've got all at one time. So maybe it's more convenient in some way to to, to have all the, the codes at once without having to navigate between the pages. So that depends 
that's up to you. And now let's check another code. So for instance, what can we say? Yes, for instance, we want only the status number one. So we want to avoid these zeros. So how you do it? You will just add something more and you will say where status. So it means select. So give me this table called free code, but just care about these columns. And this column is called status. And just give me the, the value. Let's say the value one. And I just enter OK. Mm, I've done some mistake. What did I do? Select from free codes where stages. Oh yeah, I forget to say like one. And now OK. And here you see that you've got everything with one. And if you write zero, you will have every code that you deleted on the GUI application, but that still remains here. You may do the same stuff with uh, other, other kind of stuff. And you can also do all the queries you wish. And this is actually not possible to do it on the GUI application. So that's why I really suggest you to use the SQL queries. And for sure, you can also do, if you read the documentation, here. You can also <coughs> do some queries here and you can read the documentation and you can do the queries here. But after you've got the result like this on, on this console and actually you can you can do everything uh, with uh, R Studio. but personally speaking, I prefer to use uh, RQ, uh, SQLite uh, Manager. I'm so used to, to use the uh, you know, uh, if you are using on, um, if you are using the MySQL, um, if you are using MySQL, you've got the administ, uh, you, you've got a nice administration uh, that is kind of looking like this one. So I'm quite, uh, I'm quite uh, used to to use that kind of of software. So that's why I also suggest you to use that one. But if you don't like, if you prefer to do everything straight to the command line, just do it. Do do it uh you, you do it like you like. Just do it uh, like uh, on your own way. I will just show you a last uh, queries. So for instance, let's go here. Let's go back to the coding table. And okay, let's say that you want to order it by length. So you want to order this one by the length. So you will just order it by length by doing like this. You will say select from coding, order by length. Then you are interested in this column, cell text, and then you will choose the way you like it. So you will you will do you will execute. And here you see that you've got the biggest text until the smallest text. And now if I'm trying to do the opposite, I will get the opposite. Uh, so ascending or descending order, this is the meaning of that one. And here you've got the smallest text until the biggest length of text. So you can see that you can make a lot of things with the queries. And now for the last uh, example of this video, let's just something more. Let's say that we want to order it on the same way here, but we want only the status who has got the number one. So we don't want any more those other numbers here. So how to do that? So we just need to change the query. So I will just write it. So you write, actually, I don't know why I've deleted everything. Uh, you can do just like this, select from codings. And then you say, because you want only the statue number one. So you say where st 
say choose like zero and then order by length and what I want to order the cell text and do I want ascending or descending let's try ascending and then execute it and then it's working and if I change the like one to, uh, to like zero to like one then it's also working I've got only the number one and I've got by ascending number and if I change descending number this is also working and for sure you can make all the query you want to so this is very nice to make queries and we'll see especially later with the attributes uh, how to make some nice queries on the next uh, videos and we'll also see how to export some data uh, on files like Excel for instance so thanks a lot for checking this video and don't worry if you are new into this stuff this is normal if you are a little bit lost about it but I just wanted to show you that in order you understand that this is a real database uh, working in a very organized way and you can do all the queries you want with that one so this is very very uh, useful uh, just before I close the video uh, we didn't speak about that one so here is a last button so it's actually the, the same one for it's not related to the table so it's related to the whole database and here you just see the encodings and you have other information so I just invite you to check it but if I were you I wouldn't really uh, modify something about it but if you want to try to modify something just make some backup on your folder before uh, but just be careful about it but I just wanted to tell you uh, that this one exists and also uh, with this folder with this uh, plugin you can do a lot of other stuff uh, so I invite you to be curious to check by yourself or even to see other videos on uh, YouTube for instance thanks a lot cheers